So hello and welcome to an introduction to automotive and waste development. Today, I would like to give you an insight to the industry from my perspective. Uh, I intend to equip you with the understanding of what NBH is and how it can be a highly rewarding career option. I'm also looking forward to the question and answer session because I find it really interesting interacting with the young audience. Okay, so moving ahead. So first up, what is NVH? A few of you are interested in automotive development would already know this term. I would have read about in magazines, top gear articles, people talking about something called NVH, which relates to the sound and vibration quality of a vehicle. So if we want to define NVH, it is also known by this name called the vehicle refinement. So there is one good book that I can refer to, uh, which I can, uh, I will mention in the question answer session. So moving on, so vehicle refinement or NVH stands for noise, vibration, and harshness. It is a discipline in product development now, product development it could be any product. Uh, it, it can relate to an aerospace vehicle, a car, a consumer electronic product like a washing machine. For any product development activity, I hope we have a very interesting session with you guys because I find this topic to be very interesting, and I am really hopeful that many of you would agree with me. So, moving ahead. What we do in NVH is basically we deal with acoustic and vibration phenomena. So what is acoustics? So to give you a one line introduction of acoustics, it would be the study of mechanical waves in a fluid medium. And vibrations would be mechanical waves in a solid medium or a, in a solid medium. So what we do in NVH is we devise strategies to design or refine the perceived quality of the product by means of its sound and vibration characteristics. So it could be decreasing the noise of a vehicle, or it could be um, introducing certain kind of noise so that the characteristic to the vehicle. For example, if you look up the Lexus LFA, a high-end car from Toyota, so they would they have certain systems, certain active systems in their exhaust to impart some certain kind of noise in the system so that the vehicle feels uh, kind of different. So you'd find a difference when you drive a supercar, which is meant for track performance and to erose the, uh, your adrenaline function. Or it could be a luxury, highly comfortable car like a Mercedes or a Lexus, say, or a BMW. So, and it it could be also a mass market car like uh, like a Nissan, uh, Datsun, or whatever, where the cost and weight are really critical issues rather than the features and the cost. So, moving ahead, just as a nice refresher, the definitions. What do we mean by sound? So many of us may not have wondered about it. We might have read about the definitions in our physics textbooks. About So sound, as I define it, it's any periodic fluctuation of pressure in a medium that can be sensed by the human ear. So pressure waves in air, if they fall between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and if they have a certain threshold level of 200 microscals, we are able to perceive those mechanical waves in the fluid medium, the air, as sound through our ears. Similarly, and what is vibration? So vibra uh, in vibration, you notice the particle doesn't, has net zero displacement. So the particles in that solid medium have a periodic oscillation about a mean position. So it's basically a result of mechanical waves traveling through a solid medium that results in vibration of a medium, vibration or periodic oscillation. So we are able to perceive vibration at very low frequencies. So, so if you touch a moving motor or, a, uh, or the body of a fan, so you notice you'd be able to feel vibration. 
So our sense of touch, our, the capacity of our sense of touch to feel vibration is very limited. We can feel only up to about a couple of hundred hertz. So moving on from this, the basic terms. So let's also give a certain introduction to the importance, the significance of NVH. So NVH for product development is extremely important uh, as it dictates how a product is perceived by the customer. You can call it refinement or branding. So certain brands have certain different kinds of sounds, certain vibration qualities, certain, some suspension qualities that give it some level of comfort. So focus on NVH is required from the start of the design cycle. So if in a design cycle where you are trying to come up with a new product, it could be a car or anything. So if you neglect noise and vibration concerns in your at your concept level, it becomes increasingly difficult at the later stages of the program to ensure that noise and vibration targets are met because uh, we'll, we can discuss about the reasons. So, and what CAE does, CAE stands for Computer Aided Engineering. It's basically using numerical methods to simulate noise and vibration characteristics of a product before it is actually made. So, so moving on, there are also regulatory requirements uh, when it comes to noise and vibration. So for example, we have uh, regulatory requirements in many countries for pass by noise. So it could be, so what we mean by pass by noise is when suppose a car is passing, passing by, so from a particular standard distance, the maximum amount of noise in dBs, decibel units, has to be below a certain threshold amount, threshold number. So that, so that is the compliance part. So automotive manufacturers, even aerospace manufacturers need to pass by noise regulations. There is also this, the risk of vibration induced failure so, for example, uh, the Apollo mission, so which we travel to the moon. So during the launch of an Apollo rocket, the vibration loads, the acoustic loads are so high on the panels that the panels, the initial tests were failing. So there were failure, there were structural failures in the rocket due to sound waves. Can you believe it? Due to acoustic waves. So, and those were really high frequency acoustic waves, and which we can hardly model with finite element methods. So there are different techniques of doing that. We'll, we can come to that later. So to begin with, let's start with an overview of the vehicle development process. If you're going to develop a car, you'd, know, you'd need these, uh, at least these basic departments to work for you to work in parallel to assess the design and make sure that all the requirements are met. Let's start with crash. So there, the crash is the most regulation intensive branch. So there are government regulations in every country of, uh, regarding crash. So how they define the regulations are based on injury criteria, amount of inclusion, it could be a lot of things. So the injury criteria is the most prominent. So if there are simulation techniques, there are softwares that do crash simulation. So moving on, we have aerodynamics where we study the drag and the amount of resistance this the design, the exterior design has. So and we have durability where we check for the strength and the fatigue life of uh, different components. Now in NVH, we characterize the structure. Being an NVH, you have a very deep insight into the vehicle, the structure of the vehicle, the acoustics. So when you understand the frequencies of the vehicle, the eigenmodes, we call, it, we call them. So it gives a lot of insight 
about the design of the vehicle, where the weaknesses are, and what the ideal uh, mounting strategies, ideal suspension locations could be. I mean, we get a lot of insight from a vibration study. So we also have vehicle dynamics, which was initially a part of NVH, where we only deal with low frequency phenomena, say less than 20 hertz. So we're dealing with multi-body dynamics here, where we are interested in the kinematics, the mechanism of the how the chassis and the body behaves, and what are the parameters like roll and uh, lap times, all these are calculated with MBD, but they are limited to very low frequencies. So the difference between MBD and NVH now would be the assumptions. So most of the components in a uh, vehicle, in a vehicle dynamic simulation, most of the components in a vehicle dynamic simulation would be rigidized or they would be assumed to be infinitely stiff. In NVH, we have more of the components designed, simulated, or modeled as flex bodies, finite elements, and with stiffnesses and spatial and mass properties. So, also, let's discuss about the NVH development process inside the NVH development process. So, we have two verticals in NVH development we have the testing side and we have the CAE side or the simulation side. So when it comes to testing, we are very limited in terms of resources, in terms of time, in terms of time it takes to run one set of test loop. So these blue boxes you see are in the order of the design cycle. So the design cycle starts with the concept. So you have a rough idea of how your car is going to be and what you desire from the car. So what are your expectations are, what you perceive your customer's expectation would be from that car, uh, what your uh, what the stakeholders in the company want. So all of these inputs together, you derive your concept with. So during this concept development, you, can, you don't have a vehicle to test, right? There's only, you can only test your concept with CAE. If you model your vehicle, if you model your concept and you do a numerical analysis, there are many solutions you can, depending on what you want to look for uh, in the simulation, what kind of insight you want about your future vehicle. So what uh, potential problems there may arise. So all of these questions, can to a great extent be answered by NVH CAE. So you can see that NVH CAE is the first step after you have the concept. As soon as you have the concept, you start developing a proof of concept. So what is a proof of concept or POC? It's basically, suppose you want, let's take an example here. So you have a hatchback car with you. So as a next version, you want to design a sedan, a sedan version of the uh, vehicle. Say a good example would be Swift and Swift Desire, or maybe very, very common in India. So as a proof of concept, you can take a normal Swift vehicle that is already available in the market. So you take that vehicle, you put some additional mass, you do some rough changes. Say what you're trying to do here is to make a Frankenstein vehicle. So something that looks like or which structurally behaves almost similar to the vehicle that you want to make. So that proof of concept will be tested and it can also be simulated and tested in the virtual world with CAE. So, and then we have the design releases. So the designers work with all the packaging, with all the other constraints and they come up with the CAD and Parallelly, the CAE department also starts in that CAD, that, uh, the available CAD. So the CAE then gives feedback for better design. So we can have many loops. And I have shown design release one and two, but it can be many loops. It can be three or four loops even for some luxury cars. The design cycle is short. For example, for mass market cars like Datsun and all, the design cycle is really short. Uh, within two years, you have concept to production. 
So in that case, you might have only two or three design releases and two or three loops where the CA gives feedback to the design and the design comes with a newer version of CAD, which has better performance. So this Mule 1 and Mule 2 here are basically different prototypes meant for different testing purposes. It could be one Mule could just be for uh, the aerothermal part to understand the thermal behavior of all the systems together. And it, one vehicle could just be for the crash assessment. Another could just be for the NVH assessment for multibody dynamics. So there are many mule vehicles that are also built. And this box here is VP or stands for vehicle production. So as we near the end of the design phase, we start the tooling. So different tools for the vehicle are made. At this stage, what CA does is it does a final confirmation loop to understand if the design has gone in the right direction and all the problems have been solved. So we have this terminology called red, amber, and green. So problems are identified as red and amber. So all those red and amber flags should be converted to green flags. And then we give the product to the customer or we may spend more time testing the product. And there could be post-production issues as well. So in post-production issues, we have a combination of testing and CA to resolve those issues. These problems that arise later in the design phase can largely be avoided if CA is given high importance during the initial phases of the design. So uh, CA is basically the brains of the design department. We help the designers make the best decisions at the right time. 